Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for um, Monday, December 9th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk every, about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider, sir, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev tech channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, which I'll talk about, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about up upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a shared notes document, it's a Google Doc right now, that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post the link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but can not attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. We hold this meeting in five parts. I'll explain each part as we get to them. All right, so let's start, and I will uh, take a timestamp for community news. And uh, I'll just mention that these news items come from our uh, Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter. I'll talk about that more later. So I've got two items for this week. Um, one is that uh, Ra Raspberry Pi organization has released PIO lib, <coughs> excuse me, for Raspberry Pi 5 RP1 programming. So on, RP on Raspberry Pi 5 boards, there's a special chip called the RP1 which uh, does a lot of uh, programmable uh, I.O. stuff for uh, the main chip on the board. And it, this chip is related to the RP2 microcontroller boards. We're not quite sure how, but um, it has a lot of the same features. So um, to explain, there's a new library called PIO Lib. It's a user space API for the RP1 PIO driver, which gives access to the PIO hardware of the RP1 on the Raspberry Pi 5. PIO is programmed by O. We use that feature a lot on RP2040 and RP2350 for many things, such as driving new NeoPixels. Um, anyway, see the stuff in the notes document for more about PIO lib and a NeoPixel example that they give. And I'd like to note that uh, Jeff has this code working and is integrating it into libraries for community use. He has, uh, I think, NeoPixels working, and he'll talk about that later in his status uh, updates. And another item of note, I'll take another timestamp here, is that there is now, um, in the past, there's been a CircuitPython plugin or extension for VS Code, um, originally done by Joe DeVivo, but uh, he stopped working on it um, about a year and a half ago. And um, so Will Merkins has forked that extension and uh, published it as a new version as the v2 vs code CircuitPython plugin and um, uh, it's um, it's it's very nice it's usable it fixes some bugs and he has plans to add new some new features so there'll be um, a CircuitPython plugin for vs code available there. All right. I notice um, if anybody wants to, I'll, public, I'll put some links in here about this. Oops. A 
And just to be clear, everybody's hearing me. Is that all right? Because I haven't heard from anybody about anything. <laughs> all right, great. All right. Uh, so where did this news come from? It comes from the Python or Microcontroller's weekly newsletter. It's a community-run newsletter uh, by the CircuitPy uh, CircuitPython folks. You can get the archives at uh, adafruitdaily.com. It's published every week. Uh, it depends on you to help send us uh, news. We find it ourselves, but we'd love to also have you include news. And um, please go ahead and send news to uh, cpnews at adafruit.com or send a pull request to the weekly newsletter, which is maintained on GitHub, or uh, tag a post on um, Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X with the hashtag CircuitPython, and we'll note all those things, and uh, we'd love to see the news that you have for us. Okay, now we'll move on. I'll take another timestamp to um, the next um, section, which is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Uh, this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate some from our individual status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separate, separately discuss uh, the CircuitPython core, CircuitPython libraries, and Blinka. So in the past week, there were 47 pull requests merged, which is very nice, 19 authors. Uh, names that I haven't seen or I forgot are Jet for Me, uh, PW, PDWMB, ODV and CH4 and SUK3. Uh, thank you, folks. Both uh, those fo those new folks and the folks who are uh, have often been contributors. So there were 19 authors, there are 10 reviewers, and there were 130 issues closed by nine people and 19 opened by 14 people. Um, I think there was a bulk close of a certain bunch of issues. Um, but there were a lot of uh, issues closed by meaningful work as well. So I'll take another timestamp and we'll talk about the CircuitPython core. And Scott, would you like to talk about the core? Yeah, I'm happy to. Just realized I was unmuted. So yeah, mm -hmm. good, I'm glad I was quiet. Uh, okay, so numbers for the core. We had 17 pull requests merged from 13 different authors, which is awesome. Uh, some infrequent or newer names for me, Jet for me, ODV, um, Toddbot, PDWMB, Relic SE are all infrequent folks. Uh, J Posada 202020 as well. And we had four reviewers, uh, Gambler21, uh, thank you for your reviewing as well. Uh, we have 20 open poll requests, which is comfortably under the goal of 25, which is a single page. Um, Issues-wise, we had 15 closed issues by five people, nine opened by six, so we're net down six, which is great. Uh, we have 760 total open issues. This number does creep up over time, but that's okay. Um, we triage uh, incoming issues and use milestones to uh, embody or, or track the prioritization for Adafruit-funded folks. Um, the long-term bucket is the stuff that's not a priority for Adafruit. Um, but then uh, we have 92x, which is stable, uh, things we'd like to get fixed really uh, pretty soon. We have five of those. Uh, we have 47 open issues on 9xx, and then we have 13 open for 10.0. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. 9xx ones are kind of like a weird ground where we may or may not do them. Uh, 92x generally is we do want to get them. Um, and then 10.0 will be the next stable release, uh, probably sometime next year. That's where we're at for the core. All right, thank you, <clears throat> Scott. And next up, we've got the libraries overview, and uh, Tim will do that. All right, thanks, Dan. This section covers all the CircuitPython libraries. Uh, all the Adafruit libraries can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Um, these tend to be either driver libraries that help you interface with a particular uh, piece of hardware or helper libraries that allow you to work on a project at a bit of a higher level without worrying about as many of the uh, complex details. Um, there are 347 uh, Adafruit libraries currently and 160 community libraries for a total of 507 
And in the past seven days, we had 30 pull requests merged, uh, and there were 10 authors for those. Uh, the names that are uh, newer or less frequent to my eye, uh, less familiar at least, uh, this week in libraries were uh, Mikey Sklar, uh, CH4NSUK3, and Relic SE. So thanks to those folks who might be newer or less frequent contributors, as well as to all of the other names, which are a bit more familiar to uh, my eye here on the list. Uh, we had nine reviewers, uh, which is quite a lot. So thank you to all of our uh, reviewers. Uh, I don't see particularly new names, but I appreciate all the folks who did uh, reviews this week. Uh, of the pull requests merged, the they were uh, mostly on the new-ish side. The oldest one was uh, 21 days, so three weeks, and then there were a handful of them that were uh, the newest ones all tied at one day. There are currently 52 open pull requests. Uh, the oldest one of those is a draft that is 844 days. The newest one is one day old. Uh, and as Dan alluded to, there were 115 issues closed this week by five people with... 10 new issues opened up by nine people, and a big chunk of those uh, were issues that I closed off the uh, display I.O. sensor example issues. Uh, folks can still feel free to submit those if you would like, but we wanted to close up the issues so that we just don't have those open across almost every library. Um, so after uh, those were closed, accounting for those, I should say, uh, that leaves us with 728 open issues, and there are six of them now that are labeled as good first issue, which you can find listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the page where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython. Uh, again, circuitpython.org slash contributing. The first thing you'll see on that page is a list of open PRs that are just links over to GitHub. That is the place where we tend to point folks who are brand new and want to get involved. Uh, what you can do there is take a look through the list of uh, links to PRs on GitHub, find something that is either interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for uh, or some uh, level of interest in, click on over to GitHub, take a look at the actual uh, code that's been submitted as part of that PR, and uh, you can look it over for spelling and syntax logic, uh, anything like that. If you do have the hardware, then you can go ahead and test it out as well. Uh, and um, you can leave a comment there on GitHub letting us know uh, that you looked it over and what you found. Uh, if you did have the hardware, let us know how it went, uh, if you were able to test it out. If you get comfortable with that process and you would like to get leveled up to leave official reviews on GitHub, we can work with you to make that happen. Uh, if you want to get your hands dirty more on the actual coding uh, side of things instead of reviewing, on that same page, uh, circuitpython.org slash contributing, across the top there are a series of links, and if you click over to the issues section, you'll find a, a similar page that's a list of links over to GitHub, but these ones are issues instead of PR. So they are uh, awaiting a person to come along who's interested in actually implementing the change for that issue, uh, be it a bug fix or a new feature or enhancement or something like that. So uh, if you'd like to get started actually coding and contributing code to CircuitPython in the libraries, you can uh, again look through there, find something that's interesting to you. Uh, it's definitely helpful if you do find something you've got the hardware for. There are lots of them that just need built-in hardware on the microcontroller, so you may still be able to, uh, to work on some, even if you don't have particularly specialized hardware. Um, but you can take a look at what the issue is, uh, take a try at implementing a fix for it, and then submit your own PR with that fix. Uh, we have a learn guide for contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are more than happy to help you get spun up. So if you would like to contribute, but you feel there is some barrier, uh, whether it's Git uh, or anything else about version control or pre-commit or anything mm -hmm. else, uh, just come say hi on Discord. Let us know that you are trying to uh, contribute and that uh, you need uh, some help with whatever part of the process it is, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, in terms of the new and updated libraries the last seven days, the uh, the one I wanted to mention here is in the new library in the community bundle, CircuitPython PIO I2S. So if you're looking for uh, I2S in or out on a Raspberry Pi uh, port that is now covered over in the community bundle, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and that is what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, next up <clears throat> is the Blinkit se section. Um, Melissa's not here, so uh, I'll just read this as short. Blinkit is our compatibility layer, layer for CircuitPython on single board computers like Raspberry Pi. 
So in the past week, we got no pull requests. There were 10 open pull requests. Um, nothing was opened or closed. There were 113 open issues. And there were 222,826 PyWheels downloads in the last month. And currently, Blinka supports 146 single board computers. Very nice. All right. All right, next up, we've got Hug Reports. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are a text only or missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. Okie dokie. So uh, first I've got, um, I'll start. My one item is uh, I'd like to thank Jeff, who's done numerous CircuitPython fixes over the past week, just in kind of all varieties. So thanks very much, Jeff. And next up is uh, C. Grover. I'll read theirs. Um, thanks to Foamy Guy for the informative and imagination sparking Carol the Robot stream and a group hug. And then next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, hug reports for me. Thanks to Jose, uh, Jose David for submitting some more sensor display examples. Uh, and thanks to Jeff for looking into and fixing the issue with the, the rounding of the locations inside of uh, Turtle this week. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, thank you, Tim. Okay, and now next up is Jeff. Oh, um, and I've lost the notes. Bear with me for a second here. So I wanted to give a group hug and second a hug to Tim for fixing a bug in Turtle that I introduced while fixing a different thing. All right, thank you, Jeff. And now we've got Scott. Hey, Dan. Uh, I have one hug for Jimmo uh, from the MicroPython world for gut checking me about moving CircuitPython to Zephyr. All right, that's a very interesting thing. We'll hear more about that later. Yeah, he and... didn't give me any red flags. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, I'll read uh, Todd Bott's contribution. Um, thanks to Mark Gambler and Tim for helping get the MTM workshop computer synth going with CircuitPython. And thanks to Cooper and Jeff and Mark for the recent audio filters work. The echo and filter effects are a lot of fun. Can't wait to try di distortion. All right, you can't have a synth without distortion. All right. So that's it for Hug Reports, and now we'll move on to status updates. And I'll type it correctly. Okay, so status updates, it's our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically as, you, as before. Uh, when I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. All right. Um, so I'll start and I'll say that I've mostly been working on circuit matter over the past week. Also, I've had a cold, so I haven't been as productive as I want, would want to be. But um, I'm taking uh, Scott's circuit matter code and the objective is to try to make it run on circuit Python. Right now it runs under desktop Python. And I thought that I uh, needed some um, I would like to use the native uh, cryptography support that comes with embed TLS, which basically comes with anything that does networking in CircuitPython. And I started to create a native C interface to that cryptography API, or some of parts of it, but I realized I didn't really know what I needed and what I didn't have to implement. So I went back to the Python version of the ECDSA library, which CircuitMatter uses, and I just cleaned it all up and took out everything that we don't actually need because circuit matter uses a very specific set of uh, cryptography algorithms and functionality. And uh, there was a lot of stuff in the ECDSA library that was unnecessary. So I, I pruned it down to about a third of what this was before. And I haven't, and I know that it still works on desktop Python. I haven't, I still have more work to do to make it run under circuit Python, but I'll keep working and I've been testing it as I go so that I don't spend too much time scratching my head about why it stopped working. Also, the ECDSA library had a lot of Python 2 compatibility stuff in it, which I just kicked out because we don't need any of that. 
And then the other thing I did is that a user uh, in Discord said, where's the alarm module on this uh, espresso board? And it turned out we had accidentally been omitting the alarm module from a number of four megabyte espresso boards. So I turned that back on. And that's probably important enough, along with some other things that we'll, I'll probably do a 922 release in the not too distant future. All right, next up is C. Grover, and I'll read their contribution. Wrapped up the software side of the new weather architecture. The final step is to install the source device into a hardened enclosure out in the dusty workshop. There's a playground note about this, and he links to it. We'll be reawakening the thermal imager project with a new sensor, anticipating improved performance since a bunch of changes were made to CircuitPython, Display I.O., and Vector I.O. since the first implementation. Excited to incorporate some tricks learned with palette slice and palette filter to improve pseudo-color images. I'm betting that ULab will play a prominent role. And finally, a Featherwing PCB designed to emulate the all-in-one Pi Portal functionality for ESP32-S3 feathers and the 3.5-inch CapTouch TFT wing is in the works. Although it won't be compatible with the Portal-based library, it will have the essential audio output, temperature sensor, light sensor, and funky 3 and 4 pin JSTPH stem connectors. Question is, why? Answer, because I have quite a few existing Pi Portal projects that could use the upgrade to ESP32-S3. Okay, so thanks, C. Grover. And next up, we've got Tim with his status report. All right, thank you. I, uh, I've been continuing to knock out some uh, library issues. Um, the notable ones, at least in my mind this week, were a couple of fixes in Adafruit Turtle, and then uh, in Display Button, I did a bit of refactoring to remove some duplicate code and added support for... Uh, the focal touch library instead of the the standard um, resistive touchscreen library, and then uh, on display button and a number of other libraries, I also uh, added type annotations and switched them over to rough. Um, and then uh, over the weekend, I implemented this Carol the robot um, utility, which is a, a thing that was created by a graduate of Stanford from the 70s, as I understand it. It's like a tool for learning to program where you can kind of drive this little virtual robot around with like move forward, turn left uh, type instructions. And it, um, there's various challenges where you start with the robot in a certain place, you try to move it to a certain place or pick up a beeper and put it down somewhere else or what have you. Uh, and these are good to learn the basic fundamentals of programming. There's a bunch of um, documentation and tutorials and things that walk you through logic and for loops and uh, writing functions and all kinds of stuff using this sort of little example. So um, I thought it was uh, pretty cool. I built it on top of Display.io and TileGrid. I, I may eventually um, clean it up and make a guide uh, or a library or something. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, and if that does not happen, I will we'll, uh, certainly push what I have to GitHub. So if anyone else would like to play with it, uh, it will at least be out there. Uh, and that's what I've been up to. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tim. And uh, Jeff is up next. Hi. So the headline item is that I have got PIO NeoPixel working on the Pi 5 in CircuitPython. It's compatible with the LED animation library, and it has a temporary home on GitHub with the link in the notes document. Um, and I've also put like a six step installation process there for her if you want to try it out. You have to install the latest firmware and kernel, uh, install some packages with pip and uh, Chmata file so that your user can access it. Uh, all right, besides that, next up is more with PIO on the Pi 5. Um, I'm going to implement something that is similar to the state machine class that's inside of uh, CircuitPython for the RP2, um, just targeting a subset of the features and building from there until we've got everything that we want. Um, so first it will support NeoPixel. And uh, then I'm also going to look into support for the RGB matrix bonnet. Uh, and that's what I'm working on on the Pi 5. Based on my current understanding, I don't see that it's possible to do a concurrent read and write operation like state machine dot write underscore read into um, because the read the read and write are separate uh, IOCTL calls. And from the notes in the kernel, it looks like a write will complete, has to complete before it will return. So how you do this concurrently is not clear. Um, Dan mentioned that I did a bunch of items, so I went looking for a list of the other things I did. 
Um, I fixed a problem with moving fractional pixels in the Adafruit Turtle. I changed how memory can be allocated for SSL objects on Espressif microcontrollers with PS RAM, hopefully removing some of those out of memory errors. I added the board.display property on the Flopsy board. I fixed a glitch in MP3 decoding when switching streams. I removed some unneeded code in setter functions in the core, which saved a little bit of flash space. I set up the 2025 public meeting calendar, which is uh, there in the notes document repository, so you can load that in your favorite calendar app and see the time of the meeting in your local time zone. And finally, I submitted a, a fix for the module file name in a community library. I think this is finally the last thing uh, that is needed to be done before I can drop a workaround in the bundle builder that I added like two years ago. Uh, and that's what I've been up to. So once again, uh, focus for the next week is on Pi5 uh, PIO. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, and finally, um, Scott is up. Hello. Okay, so <clears throat> I got the NRF52840 build of CircuitPython on top of Zephyr linking. And I said in the notes I haven't tried it on the DK, but I just did, actually. Um, it comes up, and I get console output, which is exciting. So I'm currently trying to connect the Zephyr console to CircuitPython serial output, so like the UART equivalent. Um, some things I've done to make that happen, um, I've moved the NRF board directory to the top level because one of the goals is to share the build across all of our ports. Uh, like I said, builds happen from the top level too. Um, and they, the way it works is that Zephyr's build system, it's using CMake, it calls into an ASIC Python script that builds CircuitPython and it replaces all of the make files. So the make files are still there. Um, but as we move ports over to Zephyr, we'll get rid of those. Um, the async Python now handles parallelism and skipping work that was already done, which is really handy uh, for speeding it up. And then uh, this is a travel week for me, so I'm off and on today and tomorrow because I'm getting ready to go travel on Wednesday. Uh, my son and I are going to New York uh, to visit Adafruit there. Um, so we're going to be hanging out uh, with Phil and Lamore, and uh, then on Sunday we go to Michigan, so next week I'll be in Michigan and off and on. I'm not sure what plans are, um, so I'm not sure how much I'll get done. And then uh, the week of Christmas I'm out completely until we get back uh, in the new year. Uh, I'm thinking we should do CircuitPython 2025. Um, any objections or suggestions? Um, one that Lamar had from our internal meeting was to start it this week, so I'll plan on doing a post this week and get folks uh, participating over the holidays um, rather than hitting the noise of the new year. Uh, I'll talk about that more in the weeds and then two other uh, kind of things of note that I'm doing. Uh, I replaced one of my NVMe drives. It failed in my uh, desktop here. Uh, it was part of a RAID 1 BetterFS uh, root partition, so it was like BetterFS replaced the failing drive with the new drive and it went really well because the, there was another drive that had all the data that wasn't failing. Um, and then I've also been playing around with Mesh-tastic, which is like uh, mesh message sending uh, over LoRa, uh, and I'm using the LilyGo TDAC for that too. So just some, uh, if folks are interested, that's what, what I'm working on. All right, that's it for you, my update. Thank you, Scott. Okay, <clears throat> so finally we've got In the Weeds, which is uh, Scott's topic about are there any feedback or suggestions for CircuitPython 2025? And do you have anything further that you want to ask about, Scott? Or does anybody have anything? <clears throat> we've, we've solicited input multiple ways in the past. Right, so um, just as a reminder, CircuitPython 2025 is a chance for us to get input from the community and kind of like just tell everybody kind of longer term what we want to see happen in CircuitPython land. Um, it can also be some stuff about planning. So like for me personally, I'll be out oh, at least two months next year. So like how does that impact our longer term planning for CircuitPython? Um, this stuff, are, stuff will definitely be part of this, uh, my post for CircuitPython 25 too. So um, this is kind of just a chance for us to all kind of like give our perspectives on CircuitPython as a project. And um, it's really interesting to see like all the different facets that people are interested in. Uh, 
the logistics of that is I usually do a kickoff post. So I'll, my goal is to do the kickoff post this week. And then as, um, and we'll get, I got to email them to get a, we get CircuitPython the year at adafruit.com. So once you post somewhere publicly on the internet, you email that list, it goes to me. And then I do blog posts kind of saying like, so-and-so said this right here. And so said that here and kind of aggregate it as it comes along. And then kind of by the deadline, which I think maybe like January 15th, like halfway through January is, is a good goal. Like give us a month. Um, and then we'll kind of just like have it set. Um, we can discuss uh, here maybe in the in the January 6th meeting, I think maybe is the, the next one. But um, yeah, it's just a chance for us to all share kind of our perspective on CircuitPython um, in the longer term. So any suggestions or thoughts about how that's gone previously that we should do differently? I just remember we had, to, I think you did multiple solicitations last year. And yeah. Like, well, this is the deadline's coming up, deadline, and it, each time right. you got a, a few more contributions. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you, I'm personally interested in to hear from the folks pushing all the synth stuff um, where they're taking, where they want to take that. I think that would be cool. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, it looks like the 15th is a Wednesday, so maybe the 14th is actually a good deadline because it gives a, it's like a day after a meeting. Um, so yeah, that's mm -hmm. I, I want I do want to pick a deadline <laughs> uh, for folks to get it done. Uh, so yeah, that's my plan, and I'm excited to hear what people think. Uh, a big cornerstone, yeah, I can talk about it forever. I'll talk about it in January when I stream again. About okay. my perspective. Thanks, Dan. All right. Thank you, Scott. Okay. So finally, that's it for this week's meeting. Um, <clears throat> thank you for attending. Um, let me find out what I'm supposed to say at the end. Uh, the next meeting uh, will be next Monday at the same time, Monday, December 16th. And then we're going to skip a couple of Mondays due to the um, end of your holidays. So uh, the next meeting after that one will be Monday, January 6th. So December 16th and D January 6th are the next two meetings. So this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for Monday, December 9th, 2024. Thanks to everybody who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python and those of us that work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. We'll release a video of this meeting on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, it will also be featured in the Python for, microcontrollers, Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. All right, that's it. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.